any Republican who would sign on to a bill like this, I don't care if they have this weak, you know, they, they've created this Trojan horse now where they're pretending that they're protecting religious liberty. Doesn't matter. Any Republican who would sign on to that should be exiled from the party. It won't happen because this is the direction the whole party is going, but that's what should happen. So that is Matt Walsh reminding us once again that he spends every moment of his day obsessively thinking about what other people do in their private lives. Things that have no effect on him, cannot have an effect on him are his one concern. He is in every way that matters a digital Karen. He's bored with his own life and so he's gotta get involved in yours and especially always endlessly your sex lives. There is no one more interested in your sex life, including you, than Matt, uh, Matt Walsh. I almost said Matt Gates. Depending on if you're a teen, maybe he's also really interested in your sex life. But no, Matt Walsh never stops thinking about what other people are doing behind closed doors. He's thinking about which ways you're pairing up. He's thinking about the status of your genitals. He just really wants to know what's going on with your life because apparently he can't get anything interesting going in his own life. And then he projects his own ridiculous boneheaded dogmatic views onto the rest of the party and the country saying, "Oh, they're only supporting this because of this Trojan horse of religious liberty. Is it possible that some of them are not as endlessly obsessed with other people's sex lives as you? Maybe they don't see a good reason to oppose it. And him saying that it's probably not gonna happen. They're not gonna be literally cancel cultured out of the Republican party as he would want. Um, because that's the status of the Republican Party. Uh, maybe it is, but also is it possible that it's the status of the country? That maybe you've decided to live your life as if you're a Republican from the 1960s, but others notice that nobody in the country agrees with you on this issue. Bear in mind, Matt Walsh was enthusiastic about going way beyond just the destruction of Roe v. Wade. He was telling Republicans to make this central, to go farther. How did that work out for Republicans in the midterms? I honestly hope Republicans keep listening to this guy because it has killed so many of their campaigns. My garbage person of the week is Matt Walsh, who basically says something about how we should not let gay gay male couples adopt babies because of how Angie's list works. I don't know, take a listen. You know, almost no one would hire a male babysitter to babysit their kids. And yet we're, we're, we're giving male couples kids to adopt. Does that make sense? Like, would you have hired these two guys to come watch your kids for a night? If you were on, let's say you're on a, you know, baby nanny service or something, but someone's a recommended to you, maybe. So oh, you need a babysitter. And you say, well, who you got? And then they name these two 30 year old men. Would you, would you say, okay, I'll, I'll have them come babysit my kids for three hours. Almost nobody would, whether they admit it out loud or not. And yet we're giving or adopting kids out to. Before I get into the substance, he's got teensy milk hands. Those are my least favorite type of hands to know exist in the world. Like this teensy little milk hand that has never done a day's work in its life, that has never done anything. And also, let's get to the facts. If it is the case that no one would let a child alone with a man, there should be no heterosexual couples. It should only then by your logic be lesbian couples that are allowed to adopt babies. No man yeah. should be allowed near it. The fact that you Matt Walsh have 700 kids at this point means you're a groomer that just wants kids around. And the horrible thing your wife begrudgingly lets you do to her to make more children is just so you could be around naked babies. That is the warped, stupid logic that he knows is is warped and stupid, but still espouses because he's the crass one, huh? This is I got to step up my game. They just my my company just offered Crowder fifty mil. And that's yeah. what I think I appeal to, to the misogynists in the room. Got to up my game. A freshman Democratic representative named Justin Pearson was criticized by the Tennessee GOP because he dared to wear a dashiki on the house floor there. And they apparently had an issue with it. Now you're probably wondering, 
well, this must have been a crazy sight to freak out an entire state uh, political party. Well, here's a photo of Justin Pearson. I don't understand what the problem is. He says, we literally just got on the state house floor and already a white supremacist has attacked my wearing of a dashiki. Resistance and subversion of the status quo ought to make some people uncomfortable. Thank you to every black ancestor who made this opportunity possible. Now, they are already reeling from the unacceptable sight of this garb. Uh, and now they're being attacked for it, the Republicans. And so here's their response. Referencing the bipartisan and unanimously approved rules for house decorum and dress attire is far from a racist attack. If you don't like rules, perhaps you should explore a different career opportunity that's main purpose is not creating them. First of all, it has been a long time since a Republican even claimed to believe that the purpose of a legislator is to create laws. They're, they believe the, the, the purpose of them is to stop anything from happening. But telling him that not only are we gonna attack you for wearing the clothes, but also get the hell out of here in February of all months is that's just amazing, JR. It's the it's the way these things you could expect, actually. By the way, we talked a little bit earlier about uh, Nikki Haley, and she was talking about the traditions of the Confederate flag. And how it's just the traditions of the history, and people yep. wanna celebrate their traditions of enslaving folks, murdering, maiming, separating them from families, and using them for labor so that you can advance your life and economic systems for your entire family in certain parts of the country. That tradition that she's in support of. So this is a tradition of actual formal garb that you can wear in formal settings. I guess they don't see their house or state senate as formal enough for the formal wear of dashikis. But if you wear one, apparently that's a problem. It's against decorum and all that type of stuff. What happened to tradition? It's it's yeah. odd because there's certain kinds of traditions that they're looking to support and others that they're not. Let's see if we can figure out which ones they care about and which ones they don't. But when someone says black lives matter, they go, that's already baked and we already know it all lives matter. Did you know? No, you don't know. Matter of fact, I think you already do know, and that's the whole plan here. It's to, it's, it's, it goes back to the same thing, it's supremacy.